Hello and welcome to the live science stage. My name is Marissa and I will be your scientist for today. Welcome to the amazing air show. Now I'd like you to take a moment to think about the air. Think about the air all around us. Point to the air wherever you think it is. Could be there, could be there. Now the answer is, no matter where you're pointing, you are right because the air is everywhere. But how do we know the air is everywhere? Can you see the air? I know I can't. Take a deep breath in. Let it back out. We can breathe the air. That's one way of knowing that the air is there. Imagine you're outside on a beach and wind is hitting you. We can feel the air. That's another way of knowing that it's there. But we can't usually see the air. However, I do have some stuff with me here today to let us see the shape and the movement of the air. This stuff is kind of dangerous though, so before I bring it out, let's all take the Pacific Science Center safety oath. Raise your hand and repeat after me, I promise. When I am around dangerous things, I will always be safe. Excellent. Now this kind of dangerous stuff is called liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is dangerous because it is very, 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 very cold. It is about negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 196 degrees Celsius. Super, super cold. So I need both goggles and gloves when I am handling it. Now, in order to see the shape and the movement of the air, I'm going to take this lid off here. You might see some clouds coming up out of it. Liquid nitrogen is so cold, it condenses the water in the air to make clouds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two cups of liquid nitrogen. Here's one cup. Here's a second cup. And I'm going to bring them over to this nifty looking device right over here. We call this a vortex generator. If I flip it around here, you can see there is an empty hole right here. And on this side, there's this big rubber drum. Now if I hit that rubber drum, air comes out of the hole in front. But if I do it just like this, you won't be able to see it. That's why we need the liquid nitrogen to go into there and show us what that air looks like. All right, so here we go. Here goes one cup. Here goes a second cup. Now let's take a look at the shape the air makes. Do you see the shape? It's making circles, or rings, or donuts, or bagels. I might just be hungry though. It was round though. The air was making a round shape. And I think round is a really good way of thinking about the air. The air often travels in a round sort of movement. If we think of the bubble of air that surrounds our planet, our atmosphere, that is round. And if I were to fill up this balloon with air right here, it would probably be round too. Let's check it out. That looks pretty round to me. So right now, this balloon is full of air, but it is full of something else as well. Right now, that air is pushing against the sides of the balloon, trying to escape. And we have a special word for that. We call that pressure. This balloon is full of pressure. Now, if I let go of this balloon, where do you think that air will go? I think it'll probably go out through that hole down here. It'll move from the higher pressure inside the balloon to the lower pressure out here with all of us. Let's take a look. Whoa! <laughs> I was right. It moved from inside to outside, from higher pressure to lower pressure. And the cool thing about that is that that is what air does every time it moves. Air always moves from higher pressure to lower pressure. I even have it written down on this nifty sign right here. Air moves from higher pressure to lower pressure. And throughout the show, we will be exploring how this works. Now I have another way of demonstrating this. For this demonstration, I'm going to use my assistant here. My assistant is another balloon full of water this time. 
It's got a little bit of smiley face on it too. My assistant's name is Bob. This is Bob the Balloon. Now I love Bob with all of my heart and soul, so I want to put Bob in a safe place. And I think a safe place for Bob is inside of this jug right here. So let's see if I can get Bob into the jug. Get in there, Bob. Get in there. Get in there. Bob does not want to go into the jug. So I've got another way to make this happen. If I squish too hard on Bob, he might pop. That would be tragic. So let's try something else. Let's try using some fire. Now remember, fire can be dangerous. We all made a promise about dangerous things to always be safe. So I'm going to put on my safety goggles right here and I'm going to take out my safety tongs. Here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a strip of cotton and I'm going to light it on fire. Then I will drop it inside the jug. Next, I will take our friend Bob here and I'll stick him on top. And we, all, we will all watch to see what Bob does. Here we go. Lighting the cotton on fire. Whoa, fire, so cool. Dropping the fire into the jug. Ah, taking Bob, sticking him on top. Did you see that? He went right in. He didn't pop at all. Now you might be thinking that he was sucked in. Maybe there was suction happening here, but I can tell you there was no suction at all. Let's talk through what we just saw. I lit that strip of cotton on fire and I dropped it into the jug. That got all the air in the jug really hot. Now hot air likes to expand and rise. Hot air creates higher pressure. And if you remember what we said before, air moves from higher pressure to lower pressure. All that high pressure hot air inside the jug wanted to move out to the cooler, lower pressure air out here. Then I stuck Bob on top. Bob cut off the oxygen and put that fire out. That meant, means it wasn't hot inside the jug anymore. All the air out here wanted to go back into the jug but Bob was in the way. So all that air out here wanted to move in and it pushed Bob in on its way. That's how we got Bob into the jug. Now, you might notice I have another problem. How do I get Bob back out of the jug? Let's see, we used hot air to get him in. Let's try something else to get him back out. Let's try some cold air. Now you might remember I have some very, very cold stuff with me here today. It is right back here and we call it liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is very, very cold. So let's see what happens if I take one cup of liquid nitrogen and I pour it into the jug with Bob. Here we go. Ooh. Once again, I'm going to hold on to Bob with my safety tongs here. There we go. And it is safe for me to touch the outside of this cup with my bare hand. The styrofoam will protect me from the cold. And ever so slowly, I will pour this into here. Check that out. He popped right back out. Now watch this. Bob has another trick to show you. I'm going to pour all the liquid nitrogen into the jug. I'm gonna spill some on the floor, that is fine. And watch what else he can do. He dances. <laughs> now let's take a look at what's going on inside this jug. You might be able to see that liquid nitrogen in there. And as you look at that liquid nitrogen, you might notice something about it. Right now it is bubbling. It is boiling. Liquid nitrogen is so cold, it boils just at regular air temperature. And as it boils, it turns into something. Folks, think about a regular pot of water on a stove boiling away. That pot of water is turning into something, right? It's turning into steam. It's turning into a gas. Liquid nitrogen does the same thing. It turns into nitrogen gas. And here is the really cool thing about that. As something turns from a liquid to a gas, it expands. It takes up more space. 
So one cup of liquid nitrogen turns into more than 700 cups of nitrogen gas. That is a lot of gas. And if we look at this one jug here, 700 cups of gas probably wouldn't fit into it. So that liquid nitrogen was boiling. It was turning into a gas. It was pushing against the sides of this jug. And we call that pushing pressure. This jug was filling with pressure. And remember, how it does air want to move? It wants to move from higher pressure to lower pressure. So that nitrogen gas was boiling, it was pushing against the sides, it wanted to get out to the lower pressure air out here, but once again, our friend Bob was in the way. So that nitrogen gas pushed him right back out, and then it made him dance. Excellent job, Bob. He's a very, very good assistant. All right, fantastic. So we have seen air move up and down. Let's look at something else. We've learned that hot air is higher pressure. Cold air creates lower pressure, but a bunch of air forming and pushing against something creates higher pressure. Let's talk about moving air now. There was once a scientist by the name of Bernoulli. Take a moment to say that name, Bernoulli. I think it's kind of fun to say. Bernoulli figured out something really cool about moving air. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to use this right here. It is a big, long plastic bag, about as long as I am tall. And what I will attempt to do is fill this entire bag with air using just one breath from my lungs. Do you think I can do it? Let's find out. Here we go, I'm going to take a really big breath. That's all I had. And I didn't quite do it. I think it would take maybe six, maybe seven breaths to fill this whole bag. But, but I can do it in one using what Bernoulli figured out. Now this time I'm going to need a volunteer. Come on up here and help me out. Thank you very much. Will you hold on to this for me? And will you say your name to our audience? All right, fantastic. Now I'm going to back up over here. I'm going to make a little pocket this time like this and move my face a little bit further back than it was before. And here we go, you ready? Yep. Here we go. <gasps> Check it out, we did it. Wonderful, thank you very much. You can head back down to your seat. Excellent. Now I did cheat a little bit, I have to admit. Once again, only about this much air actually came from my lungs. So you might be wondering, where did the rest of this air come from? Here is what Bernoulli figured out. He figured out that moving air is lower pressure. And once again, everybody, how does air want to move from higher pressure to lower pressure? So as I was blowing through my mouth, I was creating this stream of low pressure air. That meant the air around my face wanted to travel towards it. So this much air came from my lungs. The rest was the air around my face and in front of my face that traveled along for the ride. Pretty nifty, right? I think so. Excellent. So we have seen air move up and down and in and out. We are just about at the end of the amazing air show. So let's see Air do one last thing. For the grand finale, I am going to make Air spin. Now we call spinning Air a tornado, and indeed I am going to make a tornado for you right here on stage. All I have to do to make the air inside of this cage spin is spin the cage. Should I spin the cage? Let's do it. You might be noticing a problem. We can't see the air moving inside of this cage, right? It's kind of disappointing. So I'm going to have to use something to show us the shape and the movement of the air. And I have an idea about what we could use. Now we already used liquid nitrogen to see the shape of the air coming out of my vortex cannon. We've been there, we've done that. But I have something else kind of dangerous we could use. I have fire. 
I am going to make a fire tornado. Now I do need a few ingredients to do that here. I need something that catches on fire and burns. We call that a fuel. And I'm going to use this wadded up piece of paper towel right here. I do want it to catch on fire really quickly and burn really well though. So I will add another fuel to it, some lighter fluid. Lighter fluid is an excellent fuel. I'm gonna get this nice and soaked with lighter fluid, fantastic. The second ingredient I need is heat. I need it to get nice and hot and I will do that with this lighter right here. And the third ingredient is all around us. Take a deep breath in, let it back out. There is something in the air we need. It is called oxygen. Fire needs oxygen as well. That is the last ingredient to make fire. There's fuel, there's heat, and then there's oxygen. I'm going to add a bit more fuel though, a bit more lighter fluid. You can never have too much lighter fluid. <laughs> and then I'm going to drop it into the cage thing next to me and I'm going to set it on fire. It'll start out burning up to about here, but then I will spin it. As I spin it, it will get taller and taller and I will try to get it out the top of the cage. Let's see if I can do it. I'm sticking my fuel into my cage, there we go. I'm going to do one last thing and that is turn off the lights so we can really see it in all of its glory. Here we go. All right, I am putting on my safety goggles and let's see a fire tornado. I will count down from three. Here we go. Three, two, one. Fire tornado! Look at it, it's out the top of the cage! <laughs> Look at that burn! And it is starting to die down. So I'm going to use my safety tongs to get this fire here and I'm going to put it in this cup of water I have right here. Thank you all so much for watching the amazing air show. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did as well. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment on the video. Have a great rest of your day, folks.